my name is Matthew Spoke. Uh, I'm joined today by Dustin Byington of OneChain and Min Kim of the Icon Project. Uh, I'm with Aon. Uh, we're really excited to be here today. We're going to be telling you a little bit about each of our projects, some of the problems that we're trying to address um, in a new collaboration that we're working on together. So if you've been following any one of our projects, you kind of know that we have a common focus on connecting blockchains through a common fabric. So how do we bring interoperability into a world of very isolated systems? Uh, so I'll give you a quick little background on kind of the three of us collectively as teams. Um, if I can get this to work. Okay. Awesome. Um, so quick background on, on, on the three projects that you're seeing in front of you. So OneChain, Icon, and Aon. I mean, we're all three focused on this layer of interoperability within the infrastructure of blockchain protocols. So we'll tell you a little bit why we, a little bit about why we think that's an important piece of infrastructure that's still missing. Um, quick background on the three of us as, as collective teams, we've raised about 100 million US dollars. Um, and our teams span everywhere from China to the US to Canada to South Korea, Singapore and not showing on here, Switzerland and Barbados, uh, where we also have teams in place. So we're very globally focused, all kind of targeting a very similar set of problems. Um, but I'm going to pass it off to Kim to tell us a little bit, or to Min, sorry, about tell us a little bit about um, some of the problems we're trying to address. Uh, before I do that, I just wanted to give you kind of a quick snapshot of what's the state of the blockchain ecosystem today and why is interoperability becoming increasingly important. So if you look at you know the vast number of protocols that are being developed, and here's some of the you know, big names that you may be familiar with, but obviously there's a long tail of many, many more protocols, um, all of which are kind of targeting and developing really interesting key features, some of which are focused on, um, you know, really niche areas like IoT or, or large payment systems or smart contracting systems. But the one thing that's kind of obvious here is that all of these systems have been built in complete isolation from one another. So this is kind of the state of the ecosystem as we see it today and what led the three of us to really start thinking about interoperability. So with that, I'll pass it off to you. Thank you. So, you know, I'm sure you guys could all read, so I'll leave that up there. But just the background about how we kind of started this is that once, you know, we started thinking about interoperability sort of independently, but once we started kind of meeting in conferences, so we met Wang Chain in Shanghai, uh, Matt, Matt and I, we go uh, kind of a year or two back and we start you know, just communicating and talking about enterprise blockchain uh, back in the days. And kind of the key theme is that we came across this interoperability and, you know, a lot of people come up to us and say, oh, are you guys competitors to, you know, are you guys competitors to launching? But, you know, we're in, in essence, we're not really competitors at this point. We're trying to grow the ecosystem. We're trying to learn from each other. So a lot of this partnership right now, it makes sense that we work on interoperability because we're tackling the same problem. So, you know, some of the issues that we're trying to tackle here is the need to, for uh, for the interoperability. And the, uh, you know, just like interoperability between the projects right now, we each independently have our own projects in different regions across the globe. So we are focused in South Korea, Matt is focused in uh, Toronto and Canada, the US, and we have one chain in China. So we're, while we're tackling this problem, we're also working together to solve this interoperability problem. Okay, so we're going to take a minute and just kind of walk you through individually the three projects, uh, what we're each working on as kind of a summary. So I'll start myself with the Aon project. I mean, uh, Min gave a brief introduction. We're a team based in Toronto. The company behind Aon is called Nuco. We're, um, this is a, maybe a few days outdated. We're about 27 people today. Um, as a team, been growing pretty rapidly since we've gone through our ICO. Um, you know, we started down our, our path of kind of developing enterprise blockchains, focusing on the, the lack of scale in these systems for mainstream enterprise projects. And then that kind of naturally led us to realizing that as we built all these isolated private blockchains, there was one, going to be a need for these private blockchains to talk to each other, and two, increasingly there was, there was growing interest among large enterprises to connect their private systems into the public domain, so start connecting into the public blockchains. So that's kind of our path that led us to the realization that interoperability was a massively important kind of missing piece of infrastructure. Um, so we launched uh, the Aon project we announced back in kind of July, and we've been working on developing uh, our roadmap, and a lot of our, uh, our our team is kind of working towards our first release, which is coming up in January. But we'll give you a little bit more on timelines for each of the projects coming up. So for Icon, <coughs> So, like I mentioned, we're focused in South Korea. In South Korea, we are the 
largest blockchain network. We're currently leading five independent consortiums. So we have five project managers that are leading uh, one securities, banks, universities, hospitals, and also insurance. Uh, these are independent consortiums with multiple members. Uh, the products that we have right now, we we're we are actually priding ourselves that we're uh, one of the very few uh, projects that is backed by the Korean government. Uh, second, we are the first to launch a commercial uh, blockchain in South Korea in the securities blockchain uh, consortium. And you know, while we're kind of working on this uh, project, we again the, the problems with interoperability just came naturally. It's not that we are forcing this kind of like interoperability problem. This problem kind of uh, kind of rose up by these projects that we were leading, and I'm sure like you know these guys have the same problem of while working on their problem. So we're not here to market our ICOs today. We've already finished that. We've already fundraised enough for so that we can work on our projects. We actually have real projects that we're working on solving real problems today. Uh, and again, sorry to go back to the uh, kind of background where the ICOM project is actually uh, backed by uh, two companies in South Korea. One is called The Loop and the other is called The Intelligence. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Min. Um, we're here today to talk a little bit about um, digital economy. And right now, the digital economy is at about $300 billion, but um, it's really just starting to realize its potential. And one of the biggest limiting factors that we see at WanChain is the fact that all of these digital assets are isolated. And for you to be able to uh, connect these various assets, you have to move off of the very you know, trusted and secure blockchains and moving into low trust environments, moving into off-chain environments like centralized exchanges. And so both WanChain and the Blockchain Interoperability Alliance are here to solve and to work on these, these fundamental problems. And we think that uh, we're much more better equipped to solve them uh, working together. And uh, so WanChain solves this problem by um, using, so WanChain is a, it's a protocol, it's a fork of Ethereum, and it also implements uh, Monero-style ring signatures. And uh, we think that financial privacy is a you know, fundamental tenant of financial infrastructure that we're building. Uh, our unique contribution to the space is something called uh, secure multi-party compute. Uh, and that's our way of being able to pull assets in from other chains. Effectively, what happens is you take a, a private key on a Bitcoin or a Litecoin a blockchain, and you give that private key to a group of validators. And these group of validators have a work together and have a financial incentive to lock that coin on its respect, respective chain and then mint a new proxy token on WanChain in a one-to-one -one fashion. And so you can think of WanChain like it's a single, it's a single protocol, a single ledger that pulls multiple ledgers into it. And now once we have multiple, pulls multiple, multiple assets into it, and then now that once we have multiple assets on our ledger, and it's, we have all the power of Ethereum and its Turing completeness, you can do things like code up uh, decentralized exchanges using simple smart contracts. And so that will allow the exchange of assets to continue on chain in a high trusted environment. Uh, one of the reasons we're here today also is because we see some pretty significant uh, custody problems and off chain problems with asset managers, with crypto hedge funds, as many of you here in the audience. And, um, and so we think that we're starting to, to build some products and think about some solutions there as well. Um, a little bit about uh, WanChain is so we've got our headquarters in Beijing, Austin, and Singapore, and uh, we're founded by Jack Liu, the, the technical co-founder of Factor. And some further thoughts about uh, networks and, uh, and working together. I mean, one of the really interesting things is that we're really living in the, the age of networks. And one of the biggest functions of network strength and network price is connectivity. And so for us, uh, we think that you know, it's, it's much better to, to be connected to the other highly connected chains like Ion, uh, Aeon and Icon. Uh, some areas of focus that we'll be working on um, over the coming years are establishing common standards. Uh, this is you know, one effort, especially early on, is to make sure we don't go too far down rabbit holes um, and then realize, hey, well, now we can't talk to each other, we can't communicate, and so opening up this dialogue early um, collaborating on go-to-market strategies, uh, building engineering knowledge, sharing across projects, and uh, fostering global development communities. 
this bit of our roadmap. Um, so we're here announcing uh, uh, the new alliance here at Consensus Invest. Um, soon we'll be launching test nets for WAN chain and ICON. And then um, next up in Q1 is when we'll really start um, uh, the ions test net will be going and we'll really start working, kicking off our working groups. That's it. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much, everyone. That's all we wanted to share with you. Yeah. Is there a question over here? Monero style. Uh, Monero is uh, it's a way. It's it's they give it like a, a tumbling mechanism, and so it's a way for you to not necessarily be able to map where the to and from addresses come, um, and so we can repair those with smart contracts to create um, a lot of privacy within our chain. MPC is, a, is that's the mechanism that our validators use for the, the locking of uh, the private keys on the various chains and then minting the proxy tokens on WAN chain. And it's, yeah, we'll have to talk about that a little bit. We're, we're interested in what you're doing with that as well. You know, the goal was to find kind of a core group of companies that had enough shared vision in terms of where we saw interoperability going. Uh, we'd absolutely love to be opening this up to other projects that are focusing on interoperability, either at the protocol level or at the application level, that are focusing on decentralized exchanges or other cross-chain protocols that are being developed. Uh, the goal would be that this becomes kind of an industry association focused on uh, making sure that we're all moving in the same direction. Because we're not, you know, none of us will be well suited or well served if we end up with completely different incompatible standards for how do you move messages and assets across chains. So that's uh, just starting off, but hoping that there's more to join. I think that's a very good question because, you know, initially we, you know, we all know each other. So, you know, I think it was very natural for us to kind of start this discussion and start this alliance just between three of us. But yes, we are very open to other uh, companies and other projects joining. Nothing yet. I mean, you know, to just to give you some context, you know, where we're at in the process, we each have, you know, pretty uh, ambitious individual roadmaps and milestones that are coming up as projects. So we kind of, you know, we're putting a stake in the ground saying that this is a very big part of our intention moving forward. And starting in Q1, we'll start focusing on technical priorities. Uh, the working groups between our projects will start kind of synchronizing on standards. Right now, we figured getting our first milestones out the door individually means that we'll then have common code bases that we could look at and start working towards standardization on. But no, we haven't done that part. Yet. I think I think that would fall into um, making sure that our chains can consistently communicate with one another. Um, clearly, if if we're going to release a massive upgrade to our protocol and that's going to break our ability to communicate with one of the other chains. Um, that's surely something we'd want to have a discussion about and see if like, we could all you know, upgrade our chains at the same time. Um, so I guess in the, the grander scheme of things, it, it will definitely impact some of our long-term governance, but I don't think this is necessarily an effort for us to have any kind of united governance. If those are the exact kind of questions that we have on our own, and those are the exact same problems that we're trying to solve through this whole Yeah, working title right now is the Blockchain Interoperability Alliance. Um, and, and I think, as we said earlier, uh, you know, no specific conversations has ha have happened, but the goal would be at this point to just open it up to anybody who kind of shares a common vision for, you know, where the, the layer of infrastructure focusing on interoperability needs to go. So, you know, projects like Cosmos and Polkadot obviously share some of, the, some of those common visions. So assuming that, that they'd be interested, we'd obviously be open to having them join us. Yeah. We all have our own um, various strategies for connecting with various chains. I do I see sort of a trend where um, lots of the cross-chain folks are choosing to anchor into Ethereum first. Um, but um, for the 
this alliance, I think it's more about entering into each other than other chains. I think, you know, from, from our perspective, and, and you'll, you'll notice that, you know, between the three projects, you'll find very different applicabilities in these cases of where we see our protocols developing. Um, you know, we're focusing significantly more generically on just interchain communication, meaning the recognition of state change across chains, whether that's for the movement of a coin or just some update to a, you know, a data field in a smart contract. To us, interchain communication is generic enough that it can rec recognize both of those types of events. But of course, I mean, the movement of tokens across chains, as in WAN chains kind of model, is absolutely probably one of the most imminent and high value use cases of interchange communication. So we use the, the secure multi-party compute in lieu of the atomic swaps for some of its features that we think it has, that we think it has. but it's a, it's a challenge. No one's ever quite done this before. And so um, we use it in this case. Uh, a friend uh, Canada, uh, from Enigma is from Enigma has played around with uh, some, with MVC. Um, and it can be a very, useful tool, but it also has its limitations, so um, but we think we can unlock some really big utility with it. Uh, secure multi-party compute. Right, more questions than Thanks, we were everybody. expecting. Thank you. Thank you.